And again, as I'd like to point out to everybody, uh, when you hear everybody talking about, well, the Lakers have a better basketball team, and Portland has better light rail, and New York is more cosmopolitan, they don't have a film festival like this. This is unique to a place called Sacramento. So we know how to it is an amazing feat, and we appreciate everybody who's been involved in the process. And you can be involved next year with a script. Uh, all the rules are on our website, accesssacramento.org. There is an after party, which is very exciting. First year for our big after party across the street uh, in that wonderful new development with all the great clubs over there at the dive bar. So it's uh, Quentin's very excited. Finally, after 13 years, We've got a great place where a fish can go get something to drink. And uh, there's mermaids and aquamen, and, and uh, we'll have the films playing on the monitors. So please do join us for the uh, after party over at the dive bar immediately following our announcements. But once again, let's welcome to the stage the Producer's Choice Award winner, Ian Winton with Matt vs. Place Call Sacramento 2012 audience favorite by your vote is Crumble by the I'm here with Keith Stafford here at a place called Sacramento Film Festival. What did you think of the festival? It was an excellent opportunity for artists in the area to showcase their talents, their skills and ability as filmmakers. I was totally impressed. It was my first time ever coming. Uh, I understand it's been 13 years and for the most part I just think that it was an incredible achievement. You know what this does? It brings together lots of artists. You yourself are an artist, right? You're a musician? Absolutely. I'm a musician. I'm also a filmmaker. Um, and I also design art pieces uh, for, the, uh, for the world. <laughs> now I know you were uh, part of the Philly music scene and you knew uh, Gamble and Huff, right? Right. I was uh, part of the Philadelphia music scene at an early age. Started actually at 12 years old. By 15 I had a record on the radio playing with one of the hottest bands in Philadelphia called The Futures. Uh, we ended up signing with Gamble and Huff and did at least two to three years with them. Uh, and then I moved on to be a drummer with groups like the Delphonics, uh, La La Means I Love You Did Not Blow Your Mind. Uh, also, I played uh, some of the stuff with Stevie Wonder to help him rehabilitate when he was in an auto automobile accident. Uh, Dixie Hummingbirds, they had a, a track with uh, Paul Simon, Love Me Like a Rock, they were the backup. And then they redid the, uh, the song, Loves Me Like a Rock, and that's my drum track actually on this. Wow. All right, I'm glad to know you, man. That's an awesome record. <laughs> We tried, we tried, yeah. but Philadelphia was uh, a big heart of uh, early music in the 60s and the 70s when Motown left Detroit mm -hmm. and moved to Los Angeles. It seems like all of the artists came to Philadelphia at least one time. Yeah. People like Teddy Pendergrass, who, him and I actually went to school together. And, wow. Uh, he ended up playing drums and then he became that wonderful uh, lead singer for Harold Mel. Now, how about Sacramento? How, does, uh, how do you feel about Sacramento is an independent music scene. You know, I've lived a lot of places around uh, the nation here, and Los Angeles was one good place, but when I came to Northern California, Sacramento seemed to have a real good uh, consciousness, awareness for uh, just artists and the love of reality in, in, in the world. And uh, I just think Sacramento has a lot to offer. Here with Bill Morris here at a place called Sacramento Film Festival. Tell me about your reaction to this film festival. Well, it was delightful to see all these great, very ten unique films, and uh, a lot of them had great music, some superb acting, and what a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I was involved in Underwater and did the music score for that, and it was just delightful.
delightful to see what goes into a 10 minute film like this. It's really a lot of work. And I think that people who came here, all the cast and crew, really appreciate what goes into even a 10 minute a short film like this. So. You know, I like that film a lot. I, I really thought it was very touching and well done. Uh, the cinematography and, and your music, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, thanks. It was a very poignant film, very contemporary. And the writer producer did a great job and I'm very proud to be a part of that movie. Thank you. And Steve Vivaldi. Tell me about your reaction to the film festival we just saw, a place called Sacramento. Well, what was, what was most inspiring was that a 12-year-old boy won, and, and his film was hilarious. Uh, it made me laugh. It was, sack, it was uh, Man vs. Sack was the name of it, and I, and I thought it was very well done. And uh, when you compare that to all the other great works that we saw today, uh, you would never have believed it. it was put together by a 12-year-old. You yourself are a film producer, so uh, do you plan on ever making films that might be shown at this film festival? Well, we have we have a screen here. We opened this film festival with our film Jake's Corner several years ago and, uh, at the International Film and Music Festival here. And uh, I do hope to maybe enter one of these short film projects. It, it seems. Uh, it seems like it's fairly accessible as far as the people collaborating is, is something I'm interested in and getting to meet other uh, people with the same passion for films as I have and uh, sharing that collaboration to create art to share with other people. With Ron Cooper with Access Sacramento. So you're kind of the organizer of this event, a place called Sacramento. We started in the year 2000, mm -hmm. uh, and so this is our 13th year. Uh, the format has stayed pretty much the same since the first. We have a call for scripts, 10 minutes or less, so that they're doable and accomplished over the summer. We help those crews come together and support their efforts. But it's really their energy, their creativity, their friends, family that come together and make it all happen. Ron, tell me about some of the things we were talking about before the interview. You talked about how Sacramento is kind of a, a very friendly community and, and it's great for filmmakers because it's it's where you can artists can come together and, and help each other without really worrying about high budgets. Right. I have friends who work in the business in Hollywood and the general region of Southern California is so jaded by independent filmmakers. Everybody is demanding certificates of liability insurance and fees and get out of my house uh, three in the morning. Uh, uh, here in Sacramento, sometimes we get into a bad habit. And that is, good things are happening elsewhere for us. This is a great example of in starting off in the creative endeavor of filmmaking, which is a collaborative art form. You need people to come together and do it. You need strangers to be willing to trust other strangers and say, sure, I'll help you. That makes good sense. You need to use my living room. You need to uh, use my uh, diner after hours. No problem. Sacramento does that routinely every single year. So much so that I ask the writer producers to really keep that in mind when asking for help. They're often shy. People will say no. I say no. Not in filmmaking. Not when you can say, come the first Sunday in October, see your name in lights. Our film will be there. In 120 film possibilities over 12 years, 119 have been shown up on that stage. So that's an incredible endorsement. That in Sacramento, we don't watch movies, we make them. And one more thing, I, I noticed there's kind of a common theme with not all of these films, but several, and that is to kind of make fun of Sacramento, but in a fun way. Not, not in a way to put it down, but right. it just seems like there's um, stereotypes about Sacramento that kind of become the themes of these movies. Do you find that to be it, the case? In some cases, and, and that's true I think with comedy, usually when you have a comedic situation, we don't think of it this way, but usually somebody in that scene is being laughed at or something.
somehow, some, I like to think that Sacramento uh, is confident enough as a community we can handle a little teasing. Uh, it's more important, I think, for our citizens to feel comfortable with where they live. A uh, little laughter makes the world go around, and it makes it much more pleasant place to live and a place where you know new things are possible. So, a little teasing, a little fun, no problem. Enjoy.